Hello and welcome to a brand new series of The Pledge. This week saw the arrival of a new resident in Downing Street. Dylan, the Jack Russell Cross rescue dog. The pint-sized, wet-nosed little bundle of energy has already proved far more popular than the existing residents. Not to mention the better hair. If only we'd known earlier that dogs are a fail-safe way to get attention <laughs> and distract from bad news, we'd have got you a chair months ago, Hogan. <laughs> I'm now, my hands are soaking with tea at me. Welcome to the home of Pawsome Debate. Well, he can't be more barking mad than the rest of this lot. <laughs> Coming up, I'm arguing an election won't solve anything. Nick says it's time for tasers. Rachel thinks learning about slavery could help tackle racism. And Afwa says there's nothing suave about Sauvage. But first, it's Carol. OK, I'm still full of Hogan's dog <laughs> slaver. You can have that. OK, I want to talk about Boris. Not the one hysterical Remainers have compared to Hitler and slated as a dictator, an anti-democrat and a, quote, over-promoted rubber bath toy. That was Hugh Grant's deranged contribution. But <laughs> Boris the Brave, the strong leader, the true Democrat, who's prepared to prorogue Parliament and risk his party and his premiership to deliver what the people of this country demanded and were promised three years ago. This week, he's been fighting a titanic battle with Tory rebels determined to stop Brexit at any cost. That's why he had to prorogue Parliament and sack those who betrayed the government. He's right to tell MPs what they want doesn't matter. It's what the British people voted for that matters. Now he wants an election because it's clear Parliament is no longer fit for purpose. In just two days, it's wrecked his ability to get a deal out of the EU and its proposed bill will surrender power to Europe. What sort of PM does nothing in the face of that? Boris is right to fight those rebels to the death because it's his strength, his resolve, that will hand Parliament's power to the people of this country forever. Hello? Yes. Oh, very well. Panel, it's been a new term after a long summer break, so deal or no deal? We think we all need a reminder of the key phrases in the Brexit debate. Rachel, let's start with you. What's in your box? Ah, yes, of course, no deal. The UK would leave the EU immediately on the 31st of October without mm. any special yes. agreements in place to trade with the EU and other countries. Afwa, let's avoid those reds. Ah, yes. yes, proroguing mm. Parliament or ending Not a parliamentary okay. session, <laughs> stopping all unfinished motions and bills from progressing any further until Parliament returns. It could be used to stop MPs holding up Brexit. Majid, let's see what you've got. Ah, the Gorkwood Squad, the group of Conservative MPs, including former Justice Secretary David Gork, who want to stop a no-deal Brexit, no matter what Boris Johnson says. Carol, the last one to you. Ah, a favourite of many. A backstop. A way of avoiding a hard border with physical barriers or checks between Ireland and Northern Ireland. It was part of the agreement made between Theresa May and the EU. Now, team, an extra bonus point if any of you can work out the numbers. Five, two, four, eight. Anybody? Remember June three years ago? 52 plays. Oh, 48. 48. Well done, team. Count boxes down. And Rachel. I understand that Brexit has made us all think a bit oddly. Mm. And perhaps that combined with the summer heat has made us miss what Boris Johnson has done. He has shut down Parliament. No, he hasn't. He has, he and his ministers have suggested they might be above the law. And he has just sacked 21 moderate long-standing Conservative MPs. Now, if Jeremy Corbyn from the Labour Party were to do any of those things, we'd all be up in arms for days. We'd be accusing him of this vicious Stalinist purge. I don't know why you think Boris Johnson should get away with this. I mean, presumably well, you... Let, presu let, let, me, let, me, just finish, let me just finish. Presumably you cherish the parliamentary democracy that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. And I've reported from many countries where people would fight tooth and nail to secure that kind of democracy. So I don't understand why you would be so gleeful to want to trash it 
just to get I'm not trashing anything. And let me, let me correct you on one thing. Um, a judge in Scotland has ruled today that it was not unlawful. So he didn't break the law in proroguing Parliament. You know as well as I do, and everywhere around the table knows, Parliament <clears throat> is prorogued regularly. John, not like this. John, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, one of your leaders, Clement Attlee, did it in 47, but more recently, John Major did it both in 1992 and 1997. And he wasn't caught, Hitler, and he did it to stop a very damaging report about cash for questions coming to light. So let's not pretend that this is unusual. This is, this is used as a means to bring long parliaments to win it. And we're talking about six parliamentary days. There would have been plenty of time to debate when Parliament comes back in October. Carol, Carol, you can't be happy, though. And, and I support quite a lot of what you say about Boris Johnson. I do think if anyone's going to get there, it's him. But you cannot support the position the Conservative Party finds itself in now. And that someone such as the grandson of Winston Churchill, there's no room for him. There's no room for, I think, at least two former chancellors of the Exchequer, one of whom was in post only a matter of weeks ago. And they're all booted out. Rachel's onto something there okay. with the way Boris has behaved. Boris, That's too much. Boris has always been clear that we leave on October the 31st with a deal or without a deal. If any vote strips him of the ability to do that, then I think he's justified it. That is, in effect, a vote of no confidence. And if those MPs were allowed to come back in any new parliament after election, exactly what is happening now would happen again. We'd have another three years of this nonsense. People are so sick they're conscripts, not conservatives, Carol. That's no, they, what they, they are. It's, it's not mm. conscripts. They, they, are. they were told what would happen. Yeah. They were told they would lose the whip if they voted with Corbyn on this. We can't go on for years and years in this state of limbo. The British people voted for something, and they're sick of what's happening now. Agree, yeah. and what's happening in Parliament is not democracy what's happening is deranged and insane the way the Romanians are behaving because they've stripped <laughs> our Prime Minister they have stripped our Prime Minister I, of the ability to negotiate with Brussels and get us a deal it, they stopped it, him from it, doing it, it's that. really I think it's really it's really important that I think in times such as these that all of us try to use language that doesn't further inflame yeah. The tensions mm. and divisions. Like, you mean like Hitler and yeah. comparing well, so what Boris did to a coup? Yeah, yeah, but but I'm not so we tell that. that to the Remainers. I do, all the time. It. And I'm doing it now, but all of us. Like, just as just as we're not traitors, you're not racists, right? And I think it's really important that we all try and use language that, at, in times like this, brings unity. And that begins, I think, by acknowledging what Rachel said. I'm a fierce critic of Corbyn, but I agree. If Corbyn had, had overnight sacked or remove the whip from 21 of his MPs, it would have been called a purge. He's threatened to do that, Matthew. Eight. You do no, know no, that. But Boris Johnson did it, which is yes. what we're discussing, yes. right? Yes. Eight of Boris Johnson's cabinet members also voted against their government under Theresa May when she was Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. It's not as if this is something new, and they weren't sacked. The reason they're in Boris and Johnson's Therese... cabinet right now is because Theresa May government... didn't remove the whip. She was a huge them. success as so well, Theresa May, the in negotiating. Thing... No, 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 but what I'm saying is actually it's, there's, there's a whiff of hypocrisy here in re removing the whip from people for what you've done yourself. The other thing I'd say is actually that you know, <sighs> Boris Johnson's um, correct in saying that proroguing Parliament wasn't unconstitutional, because the judge has ruled in his favour in Scotland that it wasn't unconstitutional, but it was highly un it was highly unconventional, and just as conventions aren't binding, so you can't they don't have legal force and it's not illegal to break them. If that's the argument we're now using, then. The referendum itself wasn't Let's legal. Let's get Is it's Boris a hero or a zero? Well. What's Boris? I, I, think, I think you know my answer to that question. I mean, I think there's more than a whiff of hypocrisy about this, Carol. I thought it was fascinating to hear Nicholas Soames, grandson yeah. of Winston Churchill, in the Commons saying how he had been removed from the party he served for 37 years um, because of the kind of disloyalty for which Boris Johnson has been such an inspirational source. You know, it's impossible to take this man as someone of integrity. The very things that he's penalising people for are exactly what he has been doing. And it's so ironic yes. that Brexit has always been presented as a way of preserving the sovereignty of this country, when if, if you have any understanding of our constitution, parliamentary sovereignty is at the heart of it. The idea of trying to shut down parliament... So it's, I can't take... I don't know if you even believe it when you say that this, the timing is coincidental. It has nothing to do with trying to stop MPs. Parliament's sovereignty is given to them by the people of this country. They don't just have it. It's given by the people. The people are sovereign, not parliament. When did parliament. the people of this parliament. country no, vote to sovereign. remove parliamentary sovereignty? Constitutionally, parliament when did that happen? There is no mandate yeah. to undermine the sovereignty of parliament. There is also no mandate to trash our constitution. Our constitution is a subtle, it's a subtle instrument. It's not the written Remainers in a single can do document. That. That's all it right. relies on convention. It also <laughs> relies on respect. Conventions, one of which is democracy and rule of law. To conventions, which 
which the Remainers have broken time and time again but Karen, in the no, House of Commons no, over the last no three years. Remainer, our Speaker being one of the very true. people who've done no that. No Remainer has said they are above the rule of law. To hear our government can speak I, in that way is, is actually terrifying. Okay. And I'd just like to show you also, there's that, and then there's also just the conduct and the tone of yes. this government. And here I give you Leader of the House, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who I think, yeah. if a picture speaks a thousand words, this is the most powerful oh, image of the complacency really? and entitlement and arrogance. That's the most powerful that image you've seen over the past week. For our House of Parliament, the foundational institution okay. of our democracy. Okay, it's so that, this, this is, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of Remainers and a lot of people like yourselves are, to are talking from the elitist bubble, the Remainer elite. You know, what the voters think just of Boris show, is... Just well, show you, Jacob, just show you Jacob, Jacob <laughs> 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 And I'm the elitist. Okay. That's yeah, hilarious. Can I just tell you what? People, <laughs> you know, this is what, this is what ordinary people hate about Remainers like yourselves, no, because you laugh at them. You. Because you know, our, ordinary our people also voted Remain. I refuse that distinction people. that you're making. What you think is ridiculous, the people of this That's country true. are happy about what Boris is doing. The latest YouGov poll after he prorogued mm. Parliament. Let's look at the figures. Right. So a month ago, 38% thought he was decisive. Mm. Now, 62%. That's gone up 24 yeah. points. Do you have yeah, to figure out how months, many people no. think he's honest? Yeah, they also think he's dishonest. They also think he's dishonest. Yeah, and I, no, but I'm afraid those, those figures have gone up as well. Those <laughs> figures it's have gone up. Like the honesty figures. <laughs> so why are you not looking at that figure well, and you're concentrating you on why, another because one? Because actually, the, the, the people under, like the decisiveness of Boris. Because under Boris Johnson, the Conservative Party is in danger of becoming nothing but the Brexit Party. It's a small minority faction that have hijacked the party, and they have a 0.2% mandate. This is what Dominic Grieve, the former attorney, attorney general of that very party, has said. What has happened is, unfortunately, a section of my party has become hijacked by a narrow sector of those who voted to leave and who are simply using the will of the people as an instrument of potential tyranny towards yeah, yeah. any of those who yeah, disagree yeah. with yeah, them. Yeah. And I suspect that the Prime Minister knows full well that soft Brexiters, i.e. those who backed Theresa May's deal and voted for it more times than he did, and Remainers are all united in opposing that faction who supports no you know, deal. Rachel, there is no soft Brexit, let, there is no hard Brexit, let, there's just, just Brexit. Let's move on a little bit. Rachel, do you agree with me that the only way to resolve this now is a general election? I do actually agree that the only way to resolve it is a general election. I do so think were you that disappointed the that Mr Corbyn blocked? No, no, absolutely. Listen, absolutely, there should be a guarantee that that legislation to stop no deal has gone through Parliament before any talk of a general election is called. That is absolutely the sensible thing to do. And I think, I think, I think the Labour leadership should be uh, credited for putting national interests above their own interests in what they've just done this well, week.